When Brian Cox was offered the role of Logan Roy, his agents assured him it would be a short-term commitment. I mean, this guy has a stroke in the first episode, they told him. It can still work with your busy schedule. Then, you know, Jesse Armstrong and Adam McKay had to call him and say, well, not exactly. You're going to be around a bit longer than that. Logan Roy's presence is really the single element that makes Succession what it is. I've had a hard time understanding this character. In terms of his own psychology, he's arguably the most complicated of the cast. I've always loved the siblings, and Kendall especially, so some anti-Logan bias comes with the territory. I remember when my parents first started watching the show, my dad says something to me like, he shouldn't hand it over to any of his kids. They're all terrible. And yeah, maybe, but I told him, just wait, you'll see soon enough that Logan's the worst of the bunch. And I still think that's true, for the record. I've watched the show all the way through some four or five times already, and I still shout evil at my screen when Logan says NRPI in the season two finale. All this to say, I am not a Logan apologist in the way that I admittedly am for Kendall. Team Kendall. But after I already knew the twists and turns and watched the show again and again and again, I developed a lot of appreciation for Logan as a character. I also think he's wickedly funny in a way that's underappreciated. I've heard enough about Greg or Roman's one-liners. Logan has some great ones. Do good things. Be a fucking nurse. So that's how I feel about Logan. But I'm not really here to talk about how I feel about him. Instead, I want to talk about how some other fans think about and talk about him. The best starting place for this discussion is a fan theory that emerged after the end of season two. That Logan was either teaming up with Kendall in the season two finale, or that he knew Kendall would betray him and was planning on that outcome. This is meant to explain his slight smile at the end. He knew it was coming. He wanted it to happen that way. He orchestrated it, in fact. I don't like this theory. And I will go out on a limb to say that I don't think it's true. That's not a risky bet after the first season three trailer drops and basically confirm that Logan was blindsided, but still, I'll stake my reputation on it. I don't like this theory from a storytelling standpoint because I think it really cheapens Kendall's arc throughout season two. I want Kendall to break free from the emotional manipulation and abuse, so the idea of Logan having further manipulated him into making this move is bad. It's just bad, and I don't like it. And I don't like the idea of them being in cahoots either. It's boring, and it's a bad theory. <laughs> okay, I got that off my chest. Now here's why I don't think it's true, which is different from me not liking it. Logan's not as calculating and business savvy as you guys think he is. He basically just bullies people until he gets what he wants, and at the end of the day, everything's about his ego, and he tricks a lot of the audience into thinking he's a stone-cold business god because he makes his children cry sometimes. Okay, so saying that Logan's not a very good businessman may ruffle some feathers. Whether or not you subscribe to the theory around the end of season two, there is a widespread belief that Logan's competent. He may be a piece of shit, but he's good at what he does, right? Something like that? And I understand why so many people have that perception. He is, after all, constantly praised by almost everyone who surrounds him. His children call him a legend. His employees fear and respect him. But that's just the thing. When we see Logan face off against people who aren't under his thumb, or haven't already bought into the cult of personality that surrounds him, it doesn't go as well for him. I think part of what Succession does so effectively is it puts the audience under the same spell that so many of the characters are under, which makes it difficult to view things objectively. There's an idea that capitalism is a meritocracy, and Logan's at the top because he's shrewd and savvy, that he's this larger-than-life, mythic, infallible figure. What, so Marshall will have two votes when you... If he... Well, no, Rome, it's not an if. Because of this representation, the confidence projected by Logan, that he acts like he's won even if he's lost, and that almost everyone around him 
buys into it, it's far too easy to overlook the fact that from the very beginning of the show and all the way through the end of season two, Waystar Royko is in dire straits, and Logan makes a series of incompetent decisions that are motivated by emotion and ego. Let's detail these now. In the first few episodes, we are told by a couple characters on the outside, Lawrence and Stewie, that Waystar Royko is outdated, ramshackle. It's a huge company, but they're struggling to keep up with the times. Logan's confident that he can shape reality around his company, rather than adjusting the company to fit reality, which I think is a really interesting point. Whether he or Kendall are right about this, I think they both are sort of right, the fact is there's immediately doubt about whether Waystar is primed for a successful future. Things quickly get worse. Logan makes some rash decisions, withdrawing his plan to step back and let Kendall take over at the last minute, and firing Frank to appease Roman. After he's incapacitated by a stroke, it's revealed that the company is in tons of debt. This early storyline sets the tone in some important ways. Kendall tries to deal with the problem as he imagines his dad might, and the outcome is humiliating. Oh, come on, man. Fuck off. Then he tries a different approach, which seems to work. The debt problem is solved without having to resort to layoffs. Of course, the issue is that he unknowingly brought in Sandy Furness, his dad's enemy, but the thing is, Logan doesn't know that at this point. So given that, I've always been interested in this closing moment, when Kendall tries to brag to his dad and tell him he solved the problem, and Logan calls him an idiot. My question is, is Kendall an idiot? How are we meant to read this moment? Is Logan the arbiter of truth in this situation, telling us objectively that Kendall messed up? Or is this Logan upset that he's lost a large stake of the company and lashing out at his cocky son, even though there were no other realistically good options here? I prefer to read this moment as revealing something about the character dynamics rather than an objective review of the business strategy. In this instance, and throughout the series, Logan prioritizes his ego and the things he wants to do above sound business decisions. We see this pattern repeat in season one when he wants to buy a package of local TV stations, basically as a feather in his cap, And after the vote of no confidence, when he fires half the board, a move that does not project stability at a time when the company desperately needs it. And Logan's questionable decision-making is basically the entire plot of season two, when he wants to go after Pierce even though no one else thinks it's a good decision. And this is not an instance of Logan wants to do these things, and people doubt him, but it all works out in the end. The show's not over, but things have only gotten worse for Waystar. Things would have been over for Logan at the end of season one, if not for the happy coincidence of Kendall completely breaking down. In season two, the Pierce deal obviously did not work out, and it looks like the upcoming shareholder vote is going to be rough, to say the least. We're persuading more and more shareholders every day that we offer them just a slightly better chance for them to make a little bit more money on their fucking dollar, and that's all that this is. Look at that dumb stare. He's totally fucked, and he knows it. Despite the fact that both seasons of Succession are a series of things getting worse for Waystar, if you were only paying attention to Logan's demeanor, his general vibe, you wouldn't really notice. He always seems so confident, hiding any trace of vulnerability. And this isn't just a mask he wears publicly. His own children rarely see him in this state. This is the pivotal role that Marsha plays in the series. She's the only one allowed to see Logan weak and vulnerable. It's not necessarily that Logan is a cold, unemotional, or detached parent. It's just that the only emotion he ever really shows in front of his children is anger, which immediately shuts down any possibility for connection. I apologize as much as you fucking like, but I can't get into everything. That's it. 
Another great example of this pattern is when Kendall delivers the bear hug letter at the end of season one. I love the intimate staging of this scene. Logan is undressed and in the bathroom, and Kendall acknowledges that their business and family relationships can't be completely separated, apologizing for how it might make his dad feel. It's not until after Kendall leaves that Logan shows how much this actually affects him and how much trouble he's in. Kendall might be more aware of his dad's vulnerability than the other siblings, but they all have a huge blind spot when it comes to this. This will go on all night, but it might not be okay. It might not be okay? Roman is so caught off guard by this admission that he doesn't seem able to even process it. It makes sense given how Logan never outwardly lets on that things aren't going well. And then, well, we have to talk about Brian Cox. It's safe to say that in the hands of a different actor, this character would not be nearly as effective. Brian brings such a presence to the role, and imbues every line, even the ridiculous ones, with so much gravitas. I hear you bent for him, and he fucked you. Well, no, actually. The other actors often mention in interviews that while Brian is, by all accounts, a lovely guy, when he's in character, he is genuinely intimidating to the point where they don't even have to act. He just brings it out of them. If we were judging these characters solely by their written dialogue, it's clear that Kendall tries to imitate his dad's crass, aggressive manner of speaking, but it just doesn't really work coming out of his mouth and face. I mean, let's compare these two scenes. He's sure you'll understand, but he's going to need to offer an alternative face for this discussion. Alternative face? What the fuck does that mean? If I drop my pants, I can show you an alternative face. How does that sound? You know what that piece of paper is to me? Nothing. Okay, I, I jerk off on that paper and send it to you as a greeting card. Simon says, mum's the word. Motherfucker. See what I mean? The dialogue isn't all that different on the page, but there's something about Brian's dignified Shakespearean actor chops that don't really allow anything he says to come off as embarrassing or pathetic compared to Jeremy Strong's smirking, smackable face. I say that as a big fan, by the way. I love him. He's my number one boy, but I can hardly bear to watch him sometimes. Okay, so... I've spent some time beating up on Logan, but the obvious counter-argument to all of this is, even if Logan somewhat lost his touch in old age, he must have had it at one point, right? He is, after all, the epitome of a self-made man. How did he get here if there isn't anything special about him? Well, Logan basically answers this question for us. You have to be a killer. What Logan might lack in business strategy or sound decision-making, he makes up for in his ruthlessness. Throughout the series, we see him treat people as disposable, refuse to pay people for work they've done, threaten to crush people with legal action, and go to great lengths and expense to cover up the dirtier aspects of his business. Is any of this actually the sign of a genius, or is he just working within a system that benefits people who are not bound by morality, compassion, or decency? The documentary, The Corporation, famously compares the traits of psychopathy to the way a corporation functions. And it's been cited by Jeremy Strong as something the cast and crew of Succession have discussed with regards to the show. You could argue that Logan meets some of these criteria. Callous disregard and deceitfulness, especially, but I think the important distinction here is that it's not about the individual as much as the organization. Waystar Royco is a recognizable entity. Whether it's inspired by the Disneys or the Murdochs, everywhere people are organized into hierarchies, you can see these same patterns. It has some strong personalities within it, a charismatic leader at the helm, but it's mostly full of ordinary people, often incompetent and weak-willed people, following orders and acting on their own self-interest. Yeah, well, just following orders. 
I cannot see. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The character of Tom, especially, is a textbook depiction of the banality of evil, a phrase that was coined to describe some Nazi bureaucrats while they stood trial. Although I have some reservations about applying both of these concepts to real life, within the context of the show, they're both relevant to understanding what is being said here. Succession attempts to demystify evil, especially as committed by a corporation, by pulling back the curtain to reveal that all the players inside are just human. They're vulnerable and pathetic and irrational and vindictive and deluded. They're not necessarily evil in their intention. More often, they're lazy, selfish, insecure. And this is a really unsatisfying, depressing answer to some of our largest societal problems. This is why Succession is the perfect satire for these past few years, which have often left me feeling disillusioned more than anything. When the edifice crumbles and you see that the people with power aren't even all that smart or talented or competent or even often driven by any real goals, it just makes it more frustrating that we haven't managed to change things yet. Logan Roy captures the mythos of the corporate sociopath without actually really being a depiction of one. He's more emotionally driven than I think he even realizes about himself, and as the audience, we get to see him in his pathetic human moments as well. Pissing on the carpet, grumbling through physical therapy, anxiously fleeing a surprise party, desperately trying to hold a failing deal together. It's difficult for many of the characters in this universe to see him as a human being, with flaws and vulnerabilities, but as the audience, we get a more complete perspective. Which is why it drives me absolutely insane to see other fans elevating Logan to some omniscient puppet master who's pulling everyone's strings. Succession is a story predominantly concerned with family relationships, and Logan is a great character, not because he's secretly playing a game of 4D chess and plotting the ways in which his children will react to his every move, but because he's an emotionally abusive father who still has love for his children and blind spots that result from that. I mean, Kendall has betrayed him three times so far, and he's been surprised every single time. Logan's many acts of manipulation are all pretty transparent, and shown on screen for being exactly what they are, which is not sophisticated, but effective. He makes Kendall feel as if the only person who will ever accept him after what he did is Logan, and further increases his dependence on him by forcing him to sever ties with other friends and family. He spends an entire season stringing Shiv along, making her play a mind game without comprehensible rules, and punishing her for every move she makes. He hits Roman, and then later says he didn't. None of these moves require a genius-level intellect, or playing a long game in the shadows for an entire season. Instead, it requires an intuitive understanding of the emotional and mental power people have over one another, and a shameless willingness to take advantage. It's tempting to dehumanize Logan by either idolizing him or demonizing him. Let's call that the Kendall-Roy dichotomy. But it does a disservice to the masterful writing and performance of this character to treat him as anything other than human. At the end of the day, there's not much that's really special about Logan. He's just a bully. And a liar. And he was fully personally aware of these events for many years and made efforts to hide and cover up. He had a twisted sense of loyalty to bad actors like Lester McClintock. Well, um, that is my succession video essay. Thank you for watching. I don't use YouTube very consistently, 
But I do have one more uh, succession idea that I want to do uh, before season three. And then once season three is airing, a friend and I are planning to create some like weekly recap, review, reaction, the three R's type of videos. So if that interests you, subscribe. If not, then don't and um, just have a really good day.